Hey guys, it's Patty Davis with Crooked Tree Creations. Today I'm going to show you how to make a miniature angel wing wreath. This I think would be perfect for, uh, you know, you could put a stake on it to put it uh, graveside, like down in the ground. You could probably put it in a floral arrangement or, you know, one of those planners. Um, I actually even thought if you put like a you know, pipe cleaner on the back of it, you can make it as a tree topper or a wreath attachment. So there's a couple things we could do with this. I'm pretty excited about it, but I wanted to show you um, the last video that I did was a Christmas tree that I used this witch hat form. Um, <clears throat> and I told you that this bottom part here that you cut off for the Christmas tree, I told you to save it because I had an idea. And in my head, it really was going to work out great. And I will show you what I did. Um, you bend it right here and you make a wing form. Pretty, you know, pretty cool, right? The only thing is you got to make sure it is definitely 100% even. And without bending it there in the middle and making sure and all this stuff, it kind of, it'll make it a little bit difficult. So um, yeah, I will show you another form that I actually started. Uh, I started, you know, making stuff on it. And um, as I was doing it I realized oh this the two sides are entirely too off like this one's a lot smaller than this side and I didn't even realize it until I started making them and I'm like oh jeez and I just kind of gave up but <clears throat> so I will show you what I did I made my own form um, if you saw the video where I made the uh, the larger angel wings. I made my own forms for that. Um, I kind of went off the same exact size of the uh, carrot form from Dollar Tree. <clears throat> so here I'm doing the same thing. I'm using the same wire and everything like that that I used in the large form where this is only nine inches from the top to bottom. Okay, from side to side is four inches for the carrot form. And then I went ahead and I put the plastic canvas on, kind of attached it together here in the middle, and then used these dowel rods to, uh, I attached them to the plastic canvas just to keep it from moving back and forth or, you know, or anything like that. So it kind of, it's keeping it stable. Um, Fingers crossed, it doesn't get in our way whenever we're actually attaching the petals to it. We'll see, okay. <clears throat> then, I gotta tell you something else that I did. Um, if you saw the larger wing, um, angel wing video, the, uh, the petals that I used I tried to do the exact same thing, but in miniature form. I cut everything off the mesh five by five. This is actually a fabric mesh instead of the poly burlap. And you can see how much it frayed. And I didn't try it with the poly burlap, but I just, I had a feeling that it's probably gonna fray just as much. And the perfectionist in me says, no, I don't like anything that frays like this. So I gave up on this, just said, I'm not gonna, not even gonna try. So I changed the petal, changed the form. <laughs> and now I'm gonna show you kind of how I make the petal and then we're gonna attach it. Okay, um, hopefully, this works out, fingers crossed. It should, I really think it will. So let's get started. Okay, so I told you that I am using fabric mesh 
for this. You can use whatever mesh you want. If you want to use um, <clears throat> just a simple deco mesh, you can use that. If you wanted to use poly burlap, you can use whatever you want. Um, the only thing, that paper mesh cannot be outside. So don't use paper mesh. But uh, yeah, all of this will work. So what I'm doing, I'm going to cut these five inches okay and I'm just going to use a rotary cutter okay and just cut this up five inches and again this petal does not fray so you can use you don't need to worry about using a wood burning tool or anything like that okay so I'm just going to cut these at five inches this way and the other okay now, normally what I like to do, especially whenever we get to the, towards the end of the roll, normally I like to kind of lay them flat, put something heavy over top, let it sit overnight, maybe even a couple days, just so it helps to flatten it out. But since I'm just showing you kind of what we're doing here, um, I'll, yeah, I'll just deal with the curl. Okay, so anyhow, so we have our five by five piece. I'm gonna, what I'm doing, I'm going to do the Star Trek pedal. Okay, I'm gonna take one end all the way up to the other. And again, we're not worrying about these frays because that part's not gonna show. Okay, so here we are with this up to that corner. And we're not going to worry about perfection or anything like that. Okay, so right there in the middle, bring that over. So we have this corner to this corner. Okay, now this is why they call it the Star Trek pedal because it ha looks very similar to that Star Trek symbol. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of put my finger right there in the middle and squeeze these up okay and then I'm going to push this down okay and we have our petal now I'm just going to use zip ties but you can use your rubber bands whatever you want to do to keep it shut I do like to measure mine out so that each petal is the same size so I am going two and a half inches and that there you go okay I'm gonna do one more again I'm gonna make it so it's kind of diagonal to me bring one corner up I mean I'm gonna kind of straighten it out but again I'm not looking for perfection Okay, but right there in the middle, kind of get that to go over. And then, and whenever I do this, I try to make sure that this top one is just slightly over top of the bottom folded edge right there, just so that whenever we make our petal, that you really can't tell which side has the double folded side. You don't want to see that double folded side. At least I don't. Okay, and then I'm going to push that down. Okay, and if it doesn't look quite right to you, you can adjust it a little bit here and there just to kind of try to get it so that it looks very even. Okay, and then again, I want it to go about two and a half inches. And there you go. Okay, so from this point, just want to cut off that, the rest of that zip tie, and then cut this here and there's your petal okay 
Now we're going to have a whole lot of these. Um, I have, I think including these two, I'm going to have 82 made and I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. So I just know we're going to have a lot, a lot of petals with this. So I'm going to clean up here and then let's get everything attached. Okay, so I have uh, my form here. Again, I attached the uh, plastic canvas with four inch zip ties and I tried to make sure too that everything was going straight across the whole way for me, okay? That way each side would be pretty even as I'm going down, okay, or going up. So I'm gonna go, what I'm gonna try to do is do like the one row on the one wing and the same thing on the other. That way I remember exactly what I did and it kind of stays even as I go up. So I'm gonna put two on the bottom because yeah, these are fairly small uh, petals. So I'm just gonna start here at the very bottom and I have one row of holes, I guess, in that plastic canvas, but I'm going to go in one hole, come around that side and zip tie it shut. And I'm using six, six inch zip ties with this. You actually could use four inch just because it's all, it's that small. Um, yeah, these are so small that, yeah, a four inch would actually work really well. So here we have our first two here. Then I'm going to try to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, again, there's that very bottom row of the plastic canvas. I'm going up one. Okay, I kind of, I like where these are. They're you know, right next to each other. There's, so since I have two on the bottom, I'm gonna go three. And I don't wanna go a full inch up. I'm only gonna go about three quarters of an inch. Now, as we add more petals. The main goal is to make sure you can't see any of the form. You don't want to see any zip ties from the previous row. But I know, you know, we're, we're going to be skipping this. You're going to see the zip ties, but the next row up, we're going to make sure that that is being hid, if that makes sense. You'll see as we go further up, I'll point it out to you. Okay, so as of right now, you can just see this, these were just basically covering the form. As we go up, it's going to cover the zip ties from two rows down. Okay, I know it sounds kind of weird, but we wanna make sure the zip ties are covered. You don't wanna see zip ties. So, um, I think what I'm going to do, I normally 
like to make um, lines of where I want to put my mesh and I didn't do that this time. Um, but I think, yeah, I want to put lines where I want my zip ties to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So this is the line where I had my last zip tie. Okay. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four up. Okay, I'm just gonna see how that works from from this point and then, cause yeah, five would make it a full inch. So I'm just going just short of an inch. Okay, but we're gonna do four on this next row. Okay, you see where I'm going with this is we're starting to look like the wings. We're getting there. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, this last row we had five each on either side. I'm probably, yeah, I think we're gonna be able to go to six and then seven. And I think I like the way this is looking. So I'm going to go ahead and keep counting four one, two, three, four. I like where it's where it's going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, somehow I ended up one, two, four down on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to a fifth one, just so these are a little bit more even. I know it's just one row, but that one row is going <laughs> to get on my nerves anyway. So I'm going to keep going up. I'll do six, seven, and eight. If it changes, I'll let you know. Okay. But we'll stop here and we'll get back up. I'll meet you whenever I get up to here. Okay. Okay. So we got to this point. Um, I will say I did do five, six, seven. Instead of eight, I did another row of seven. Uh, there was no way I was going to fit eight on there. So we're at that point. Okay. Now I'm going to start kind of going up and around. And um, just an FYI, we have 68 petals right now on here yeah that was 34 on either side and I realized I was running out so I stopped I made more petals so let's get started I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do one just around the side here And I'm going to kind of just go up the side. Well, you know what? I'm going to try to keep this as even as possible. So I'm going to do each side as I go just to try to keep it even. And at this point, we're really going to kind of get these petals to flare out. And we don't want them straight out 
but we just kind of want them down and then out. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of go just a couple, couple over. Uh, let's try that. And kind of go at an angle here. So it's almost flaring out kind of like these petals are. Again, we're just making sure we're able to kind of hide any zip ties, anything like that. Yeah, I don't know if this looks very even, but hey, it's close. So I'm going to keep going. And again, this is kind of going in a circle, well, concave. So just kind of keep going. This is kind of in the way, so I'm going to just go one up and hopefully that works. It should. Yeah, this dowel rod is coming right to where I have this um, zip tie coming out. So it's going to be kind of tight, but it works. So if you have to kind of share a hole, uh, it'll work. And instead of this one being at an angle, this one's going to go straight, straight out to the side. And if you see like any gaps, like I just feel like I really need something right there. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there.
So it seems like I'm going to need to make a few more petals. Okay, well, I, I made 16 more. Hopefully that's enough. But um, I just thought, you know what? I want to make these closer together. Make sure everything is covered that needs to be covered. Okay, so I am going to go from the inside out. Yeah, inside up, inside and down. Okay. That way, I just feel like I would definitely make sure that would make sure that I have everything covered. Um, so I'm going to do this right here because that's like a big gap right there. I want to make sure that's taken care of. Ah, okay, so we're done now. Um, so from this point, all we have to do, we're gonna do some kind of flowers in the center. Um, you could do some kind of a, like maybe a heart uh, with somebody's name on it. Uh, there's all kinds of things we can do from this point. I think this one's gonna be for my mom. I'm gonna put some purple flocked roses in here and I'm going to show you real quick how I do it okay okay so these are the roses that I want to flock um, I am not a professional flocker although I have flocked a time or two I am just planning on doing this. I got this medium here uh, a few years ago. Um, <laughs> did not use much of it at all. So I am just going to you know, continue using this. What you need is a spray bottle, okay? Just filled with water and this flocking and uh, like a sifter. I got this at the Dollar Tree. Okay. So, yeah, buck 25. It's going to get ruined. It'll be fine. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some of this flocking kind of into the sifter. Okay. That should be plenty for all that I'm going to do. Okay. And first thing what you do is you spray this down. And then you just kind of shake the flocking onto it. And then you spray it again. Shake it on. Oops. Okay, and just kind of keep repeating it until you're happy. See, I kind of like that. Okay, let's shake this. Well, hey, if that stays on there, all the much better, right? Okay. Well, I don't want this to go to waste. So let's put that back in here. Which, you know what, that's already wet, kind of, so. Okay. <laughs> put 
this over here. Since this is partially <laughs> flocked, we'll go ahead and flock this the rest of the way. again and I'm just going to keep doing this to all of these so I found some smaller greenery to attach to this wreath a smaller wreath needs smaller flowers and greenery right these are all flocked and have some gorgeous shimmer to them. I do believe most of these I found at Joanne Fabrics, but the purple roses I got from Hobby Lobby several years ago. I'm just hot gluing everything on, filling in where I think it's needed. And voila! Don't you think this is beautiful? I added some glittery baby's breath in here too, just to kind of give that, put a little extra white in there because it was, you know, we needed some white. But I think this turned out fantastic. I am so happy with it. Um, I will tell you what I did. I'm make, I made this for my mom's grave. And I thought, I was trying to be as inexpensive as possible and I thought okay I'm gonna just take a stem from one of the flowers and I kind of zip tied it on here and I thought oh that's brilliant well guess what as soon as I put it in the ground it flopped yeah it was a literal flop so I'm gonna take that off and instead what I'm gonna do these uh, dowel rods that I used here. Now, this was actually one dowel rod that I cut in half and used it there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put one dowel rod like here, just to give it some stability, okay? And then I'll put a second one like right here, okay? Zip tie kind of like the two of them together right there in a couple spots and you know have that one up here so we have a good probably eight inches kind of sticking out from the bottom i'm going to do that on either side of the wing that should give it plenty of stability fingers crossed that works um if you decide you want to use this for um like a wreath attachment or uh tree top or something like that then I would suggest just a good uh, I have well this is gray but I would grab like a white um, pipe cleaner okay just grab a, a white pipe cleaner or some wire one or the other kind of take it through maybe a couple times through the plastic canvas and just wrap it around your wreath or your tree top whatever you want to do that should work out perfect so but I am very very happy with this it was a labor of love I will say um, I used a hundred and thirty petals all together that's a lot of petals but you know what if you are making it for a loved one it's worth it right so I grabbed this wine today it's called old soul and I thought it sounded like it would be perfect for the wreath I did today um, just for a memorial for our loved ones if you are making this for a loved one let's have a toast Cheers. My name is Patty Davis. I'm with Crooked Tree Creations. I'll see you in our next video.